welcome back. We're still looking at different types of changes uh, which Meta can actually undergo. So now, up to thus far, we've managed to look at, you know, what happens in terms of, you know, a physical change where a material or a form of Meta changes from one phase to the other. We've looked at the different aspects in terms of, you know, the size, the shape, you know, the chemical composition and the physical, you know, properties of that material as well as the mass. But now we want to, uh, you know, focus our attention or just change gears a little bit and look into what exactly happens uh, you know in a in a chemical change so that at the end of it all we are able to show differences and similarities between a physical as well as a chemical change so by now we know something about a physical change in the sense that you know it involves uh, largely a change in shape and size of a material. However, the chemical and physical composition of that material uh, remains the same. So now we want to look at what exactly happens, you know, in a, a chemical type of a change. So this is the second type of a change that we want to uh, uh, discuss, right? So some of the key words uh, that we uh, want to remind ourselves of is, you know, what exactly a compound is. Remember, compounds are pure substances in terms of classification of matter, and uh, compounds are actually made of atoms of different elements, okay? Now, again, this is about chemical change largely, right? Okay, now, what are some of the characteristics of pure substances as uh, which are elements, okay? Uh, a pure substance, uh, an element is actually a pure substance with unique physical properties. Now, what are some of the physical properties that we know of any material that would uh, I want to remind ourselves of? We talk of density. Density, which we said um, is the ratio of mass to volume of a material, okay? Right? while uh, we talk about the melting point, the temperature at which a certain phase change occurs. This has a lot of implication in terms of strength of the material, you know, the hardness, which also at the end actually justifies the use of a particular material. Also, we talk about conductivity. Uh, this can be electrical as well as thermal, okay? So conductivity has to do with um, electrical conductivity, right? The ability of a material to uh, actually allow electricity to pass through it or thermal in terms of heat transfer, right? Okay, and then we also talk about solubility. Does the material, uh, um, you know, uh, completely dissolve in a solvent to form, you know, a solution which is either homogeneous or heterogeneous. So these are some of the uh, uh, physical properties that we need to remind ourselves. Again, pure substances with unique, unique chemical properties are, are in terms of elements. What do we know about elements? They cannot be broken down into simpler substance. So the simplest, you know, particle or the smallest unit that makes up an element is actually uh, an atom. So all these elements are actually made up of atoms of the same kind. So a, a specific element has got atoms of its own kind making up that material, okay? Uh, we can also talk about the reactivity, how easily they react with some other substances in a chemical change, right? And also uh, they form acids or bases or neutral substances in terms of elements of uh, you know, of a, of a substance. And then pure substance with unique atoms, uh, you've got the same number of protons. So the number of protons making up, you know, an atom of an element is an indication of the atomic number. So atomic number is actually the proton number. And then once again, uh, they've got, they may have different number of neutrons. Uh, so in other words, we are saying that we can have an element, let's say um, X, Okay, that's the symbol, it can be anything. And then if these materials, let's say this is, it has got um, atomic number A and then the mass number is B. We can have the same element with the same, you know, atomic number, the same number of protons, and then we find that the, 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 the number of neutrons uh, which contributes to the mass number of that is different. So these are atoms of the same element with same atomic mass but different you know, uh, uh, same atomic number, but different atomic masses, right, okay? So we'd call these isotopes. So these essentially would be isotopes of element X, right, okay? And then again, 
uh, we talk about compounds as pure substances uh, with unique physical properties with respect to the very same uh, uh, you know, physical properties in terms of density, melting point, conductivity, as well as solubility. But remember, compounds, they consist of atoms of different elements chemically bonded with each other. That's what is very important, okay? So they can, they can be broken down. Compounds actually can be broken down into simpler substance. So from complex to simpler, it, it's that, that change is actually possible for a compound. And they can be acids or bases or neutral, okay, in terms of, you know, uh, classification once again, right? So um, when you talk about um, compounds and elements, both of them are actually pure substances, okay? And remember, it's either pure or impure. So if we, 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 we can go back to, you know, the classification uh, of matter, uh, it just to give us, a, you know, a broader understanding of that, we've got pure substances, okay? Um, okay, and these pure substances are actually elements, okay, and compounds. Okay, right, okay, and then on the other end, we've got impure substances, right? So if these substances are impure, uh, we, we actually talk about mixtures, okay? Then you can go on and further uh, actually uh, distinguish mixtures between homogeneous and heterogeneous. So elements have got unique properties, again, uh, chemical properties, whereas uh, compounds are also have got their own. But what is so important, is the, you know, the, the long and short of it is that elements cannot be broken down into simple substances, while comp that is possible with compounds, right? So for now, we shall take a short breather, and then after that, we'll look more into the detail of what exactly happens during a chemical change so that we can be able, at the end of it all, to actually distinguish between a physical as well as a chemical change. For now, let's take a short break. Mm -hmm.